Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I am an educator at the North Carolina Aquariums at Pine Mill Shores. And joining me today is Jim Morton from the Seattle Aquarium. And he is a shark expert and he's going to join me today to talk a little bit about shark myths and misconceptions and tell us some really interesting true facts about sharks. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do at the Seattle Aquarium. Sure. Uh, at the Seattle Aquarium, I'm the Director of Conservation Engagement and Learning. Uh, and so our team helps people learn how they can protect and, and be part of saving the ocean. I also work with AZA's Safe Sharks and Rays Conservation Initiative, where we take up a whole host of actions to help uh, promote shark and ray conservation. Nice. Now, quick question. Do you have a favorite kind of shark? Oh, right? I do. I absolutely do. I know there's, there's, I know there's over 500 species and you're supposed to say you like them all equally, but I don't, I like blue sharks a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's just something about their, their grace uh, and their beauty. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a shark that when I see it, it just makes me feel really good. <laughs> I'm a fan of six skill sharks myself. I think they're fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, they, yeah, we're big fans of six gills here at, at the aquarium as well. They, they, we, we study them um, pretty extensively and they live sometimes right underneath our pier. <laughs> they're, they're awesome animals. Sharks in general are, are pretty amazing, but unfortunately there's just a lot of weird myths and misconceptions around sharks. So I hope that we can shed some light on some of those uh, misconceptions today. Um, without further ado, how about we just jump right into them? Sounds great. All right, so the first big misconception about sharks is that all sharks are big with big teeth. Yeah, so the, as you know, mentioned a minute ago, over 500 species of sharks. And yeah, people have a mental image of a shark and maybe, it is a, maybe it's a great white, but, but often it's, it's big and gray and toothy. And there are some that are big and gray and toothy and a lot of people love them for that. They just think that that's what makes them awesome. Uh, and I don't disagree. But what I think makes them awesome is the incredible variety that sharks uh, possess. And, and when you throw in rays as well, you're talking about 1,200 species. So just shocking variety. And, and everything from a shark that will fit in the palm of your hand to a shark the size of the school bus. And the biggest sharks end up having the smallest teeth, which is the strangest thing. You talk about a, a whale shark might have 3,000 teeth. That sounds terrifying, but they're all about the size of an aspirin. Uh, and it's an animal that eats plankton. So, and then some like some, some stingrays and, and other rays have really either really small teeth, really close set that are more for, for, you know, sort of grinding things or stingrays, which have just flat plates that hardly look like teeth at all. Just incredible diversity. And, and, and it's, you know, it's one of my, I don't know, I don't wanna call it my pet peeves, my, my, like my favorite topic. And I even created an entire hashtag around it called uh, hashtag diverse sharks, because I just don't think we talk enough about like the other 510 species of sharks that we don't normally see on TV. One of my favorite things to talk about with guests here in North Carolina is the diversity of sharks. And then you can see that diversity just by looking at their teeth. I actually have some shark jaws with me today. So I have some nurse shark jaws. So this definitely goes against that myth that all sharks have really big teeth because nurse sharks do have those nice little teeth. Uh, but then we do have some sharks around here that do have larger teeth, like our sand tiger sharks. So they are definitely known for some of those larger teeth, but just because they have larger teeth doesn't necessarily mean they eat large prey, correct? No, I, you know, th those teeth are a great example. I mean, those are sort of long and prong shaped, almost like the tines of a fork. And so it's really more about grabbing and swallowing than it is about, you know, sort of, you know, tearing or, or, or ripping or anything like that. And so you know, it's, I love that you can look at a shark's teeth and understand a little bit about what they eat. I think that's fascinating. It absolutely is. Now we do know that sharks are kind of at the top of the food chain. We think of them as these big apex predators, but another big myth about sharks is that they don't have any natural predators themselves. Yeah, so sharks, you know, again, 500 species, right? There's a tremendous variety. There are some that are those apex predators, but even those sharks at the very top of the food chain, like the biggest, gnarliest, toughest shark you can imagine, maybe a great white, they still have predators. And great whites are sometimes preyed upon by orca whales uh, and, and a whole host of sharks throughout the food chain 
I, they might be fed upon by other sharks, by really large fish. They might be preyed upon by uh, seals and sea lions. And so sharks, you know, they fit into an ecosystem uh, and they're an incredibly important part of that ecosystem, but it doesn't mean they're always at the top of the ecosystem. And of course, they're, they're probably their most significant predator are, are people. Yeah, so sharks come in all different shapes and sizes. They're found all over the world. And we've established that they have predators, they're predators themselves, they have different size bodies and teeth. Um, so they must live in different types of habitats as well. Another big myth about sharks is that they are all right below the surface of the water, right where we can see them. Yeah, and you know, when you, there are really cool shots of people at the beach and you see sharks all around them because mostly sharks just don't care. Uh, there are a lot of sharks that are that live in, in shallow coastal waters, but that's really just doesn't capture it at all. I mean, there, there are a lot of big, wide open ocean sharks. So um, like my favorites, the blue sharks, oceanic white tips, makos live in these big open blue water spaces where they might never see the, the bottom of the ocean in their lives. And then you've got, you've got sharks at the surface. You have sharks down thousands of feet deep. You have sharks in tropical waters. You have sharks under polar ice caps. Uh, there, there's just so much variety in where you find sharks. You have some sharks that live in, in river mouths and you have stingrays that live in river systems. So mm -hmm. tremendous variety in where they live, whether it's at the surface or whether it's deep, whether it's warm or cold water, uh, whether it's close to shore, or whether it's far, I mean, pretty much anywhere you go in the ocean, you could be likely to find a shark. I know Greenland sharks have been getting a lot of attention in the media lately and they're a deep species dweller, correct? Yeah, I mean, they're, Greenland sharks are fascinating, right? I mean, they think, we think that they may live 400 years, uh, which is mind boggling to me. That means there could be a, a Greenland shark swimming over there that's swimming around in the ocean that's older than our country. Uh, and so just this, this idea that these sharks live these long lives. And that's, that's part of the issue with, with shark conservation is that many sharks, they live long lives, they grow very slowly, uh, they mature very late, in life, so a really big shark uh, that might be taken in a fishery may never have reproduced at all. Uh, they also, re you know, reproduce with fairly few young, and so they are vulnerable to fishery. They are vulnerable to, to conservation impacts. Um, but it also means that they've they've seen a lot of stuff happen in, in the ocean, and I, and I think, like many natural systems and and animals, they're resilient. And so if we give sharks a break, we can see that recovery. We just may have to be patient. Being a shark expert, I'm sure you've had people ask you about megalodon. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's, and, and you know that the that documentary a few years ago that that was um, that was tough, right? I mean that that was <laughs> it really uh, it was very convincing, and a lot of people just want megalodon to be alive. I want megalodon to be alive. It is an amazing, <laughs> impressive, uh, unbelievable shark. And it's long gone, long extinct. Uh, and there are plenty of amazing sharks that take its place. I know that some people think, well, maybe they're, they're hiding in the deep sea, but the, it's just a shark that size is not something that would go unnoticed. Uh, and so um, it, it, there's really strong evidence that they've been gone for a very long time. Um, they're fun to talk about though. And, and I think that, you know, if we, I would love to see a really strong documentary just on the, the actual life and times of a megalodon shark without having to pretend that that they're still around. Yeah, they're they're very fascinating and there's definitely this big myth that they still exist today because there is that fascination surrounding them. They've been appearing in mainstream media a bit more lately and people are very fascinated by these big huge toothy sharks which we touched on a little bit earlier and I don't think there's any shark bigger or toothier than a megalodon. Um, their, their teeth are, were about seven inches long. And my, I know for a fact that my hand is about seven and a half inches long. So that's almost as big as my entire hand. And this was a shark that was bigger than a school bus during its time, but it's been extinct for millions of years. Yeah. And I think it, it really shows you just the, the fascination uh, that's, that people have for the ocean and sort of the great unknown that it is, you know, a tiny fraction of the ocean is well explored. People like to say we know more about Mars or the moon than we do about our own ocean. Uh, it, and, and yes, it, it represents like 70% of you know, the Earth's surface, 
but it also represents uh, like 99% of the biosphere, like, like the livable space on this planet is mostly ocean. And there's just so much out there that I think people get wrapped up in the romance of that and that there's so much of the ocean that's unexplored, then why can't it be out there? And of course you can't prove a negative. So how do you prove that it's not out there? You don't, but there's no proof that it is out there. And it's, there's good proof that we don't, we haven't seen it anymore since a certain point in the fossil record. So, I mean, I think it's, it's a dead on certainty that it's not, uh, that Megalodon is not still around, but that doesn't mean there isn't some pretty fascinating stuff out there that's still to be discovered. I mean, we're discovering new species of shark almost weekly. And so that number keeps going up and up and up. And those sharks are weird. They're weird and they're fascinating. Uh, and, and sometimes, they're hiding in plain sight, which I also think is just just amazing. Like sometimes we'll look at two sharks and, and think that they're the they, they're the same species, and then later find out by looking at their genetics, these are actually completely different species. Uh, and so there are there are new species of sharks that are hidden right in front of our eyes. Uh, so much so much still to learn for shark. We know a ton, but there's just so much more to learn still. What would you say is the weirdest shark you've ever heard of or encountered? Uh, <laughs> There's so many to choose from. Goblin sharks are very strange. So oh my gosh, yes. a, it's a deep sea shark. It looks like it has an ironing board for a snout, um, but it also has these crazy slingshot jaws and just go to YouTube and Google goblin shark because it just has this, this wild, and you, if you're gonna have your, your, your mouth that far behind your snout, you're gonna have to have some sort of mechanism to get something underneath there. Uh, but, but there's also sharks that are just, just weird and cool and beautiful. Like Wobegong sharks are among my favorite. Uh, it's a flat shark, but it also has like this crazy mustache uh, that it, it uses to break up its form and, and little fish and, and shrimp go to hide in what looks like kelp. Worst decision they ever make. Uh, so Wobegong are amazing. Uh, there's a shark called a puff at or shy shark that actually that will tuck its eyes underneath its tail as a way to sort of sort of hide and, and be less conspicuous. So many weird and wonderful sharks. I remember being eight years old and the first um, unusual shark that I ever read about was a cookie cutter shark. Yeah, you know, and that's, I feel like that's the gateway to weird sharks. It's the one that we, we love to talk about. And, you know, talking about shark teeth, the shark, cookie cutter sharks, you know, maybe a foot long or so, but its teeth are huge compared to its body size. If a cookie cutter was the size of a great white, then its teeth would be the size of your head. And these really big teeth, Thank but they use it to, and this little shark eats whales and tuna and large shark. It's just, it's really fascinating just by taking these little, little chunks out and then, then swimming off. Weird. <laughs> Sharks are so cool. <laughs> So we've spent quite a bit of time talking about all these different myths and misconceptions about sharks, um, but there's a lot of really hard true facts about sharks that are important to talk about too. And of course, one of the really big ones is most of these misconceptions about sharks are based on the fear of encountering a shark in the wild. And the truth is the media really hasn't helped to alleviate some of those fears. There's a lot of movies and TV shows that sensationalize um, certain sharks' behaviors or even certain species. And it makes it really difficult to protect some of these animals or even um, help people make connections with these animals and want to protect them. Yeah, you know, it's, it's everybody's favorite topic, right? Negative human shark encounters like that are vanishingly rare, uh, even in, in really banner years for, for shark, negative shark encounters. You, you're talking about 60 or so uh, unprovoked attacks. And that's, even if you doubled or tripled that, that's, you know, essentially a 0% of the people who go into the water. And, you know, but that story is compelling to people, right? Uh, that it's a predator, that they're the villain. Sharks are always a villain. They're never the heroes. And it's, it, it's convenient, right? There, there are sharks that are big and toothy and should be shown much respect in the same way that a tiger should be shown respect. Um, but while it's healthy to have uh, respect for an animal that's, that's your size and a predator, uh, it's also not healthy to allow that kind of, that kind of misconception about, about your risk 
to color your feelings about that shark from a conservation perspective. Uh, and I think that thinking of sharks as big and scary and awesome doesn't mean that we can't conserve them. It doesn't mean that we can't love them. It doesn't mean that we can't celebrate them. I just want to see us spread it around a little bit. I, I want to start, I want to talk about some of the animals, some of those sharks that aren't quite so scary. Because I think the more that we talk about attacks, the more it reinforces those kinds of ideas. Well, you know, Sylvia Earle, uh, she, has a, um, she has a great line. She says, if you go into the ocean and you don't see sharks, that's when you should be afraid. Uh, it's such an important part of that ecosystem that the fact that they are so less, so much less common, that divers see them less often on coral reefs, that we see them less often when we're snorkeling, um, that's, that's, a, that's a much scarier prospect for me. One of the ways that people can make connections with sharks is by learning more facts about them and by better understanding exactly the role they play in their ecosystems. So why exactly is it so important for us to have sharks around? Well, as we, you know, we've talked about before, sharks are apex predators. And so one of the things that sharks do is they, they help ensure that populations are healthy. They, they feed on, on weaker and sicker animals and create a more, more healthy ecosystem. And, and sharks provide important food sources for, for other animals within those ecosystems. And so the, the, the challenge with an ecosystem is that it's all incredibly interconnected. And so you can never quite predict what will happen when you remove a piece of that structure. And so the last thing we want to do is experiment with the ocean by removing species. And so even, you know, where we see that a shark is incredibly important to the way that a, an ecosystem functions or the way that it's held together, even when we don't necessarily know or understand exactly where that shark fits in or, or what would happen if we removed it, that's not an experiment we want to try. Uh, we know that sharks are important and we know that if all those animals within those systems are, are critical to healthy functioning. And so it's, it's really important to maintain that diversity and, and diversity within an ecosystem, whether it's sharks or the other animals that live within an ecosystem that always makes the system stronger. It's it stronger, healthier, more resilient, and you know, a lot more interesting. Absolutely. So needless to say, it's very important that we keep sharks around in order to help keep our oceans healthy. So another way to help protect sharks is by working to protect our oceans. A recent movement is the 30 by 30 movement um, because there is research that suggests we need to protect 30% of all of the world's land and 30% of all of the world's oceans in order to prevent the extinction of a million species, including many shark species. And people can visit the campaignfornature.org website and learn more about the campaign yeah, the 30 by 30 program is so incredibly important. Um, you know, we do as, as humans, we rely on the ocean for, for many things. Uh, you know, we, we rely on it for protein, rely on it for our cultural practices. We rely on recreation and transportation. Um, it's, it's incredibly important that we maintain a healthy relationship with the ocean. And so if we need to, uh, if we need to utilize resources from the ocean, we also need to provide those buffers those places for the ocean to, to recover and, and, and to thrive. So I, I think that this idea of protecting 30% of the ocean, it sounds like a lot, but the oceans are a life support system. So I think it's a small, small sort of ask to, to protect your life support system. Of course, something that everyone can do is to continue learning more about sharks and discovering more about the wildlife that lives in our oceans. And you can do that by visiting your local AZA aquarium like the Seattle Aquarium or North Carolina Aquariums at Pine Mill Shores. So we certainly hope that we get to see all of you watching this video very soon so we can spend some time appreciating sharks for the amazing animals that they are. Yeah, anything that we can do to help, help our community understand that sharks are important to us, uh, that we bring sharks into that sort of public consciousness because you know, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on in the news all the time. There's a lot of things that are competing for our attention and sometimes the ocean and especially sharks can be out of sight and out of mind. So I think aquariums are a great place to keep that conversation going, to, to share our values with our community. Uh, and it's just, they're just fun. All right, thank you so much for joining me today, Jim. It was an absolute privilege to have you here. And I wanna thank all of you who are watching this video today for joining us as well. And I hope to see y'all at the aquarium really soon. Bye. Thanks again. Thank you.